Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Branson here, and uh, I want to talk to you guys about the Toolman essay today. And I'm going to talk about three parts that are what I consider to be add-ons to the traditional argument essay. Um, the Toolman essay is a model of argumentation that is um, aimed at getting your reader to change their mind or compromise. Um, it is slightly different because it, it um, um, just wants you to connect deeper with your reader. Now we are oftentimes, let's say we're going to be in an argument with one of our family members or a friend, and if we want to change their mind, we a lot of times we'll, be like, we'll kind of like pull back and say, these are my reasons, what are your reasons? And so, you know, you somewhat refuse to compromise sometimes. But the Toolman model um, takes that, it uses that sort of, this is my stance, but it also tries to kind of reach out a little bit and say, hey, how can we come to a compromise on this particular topic? Um, I do want to say that I'm not a, a YouTuber, and so I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes here, and um, so I just want to encourage you to, to um, hang with me, even though I am lecturing on, on a computer. I'm not used to that. And um, so I'm not going to be as entertaining as um, some YouTube um, YouTubers, I guess you would call them. And um, so again, this video is going to go over the qualifier. I'm going to go over the three add-ons, the qualifier, the warrant, and the counter argument. So I'm going over those three things in this video. That's the main point of this video. Okay, um, so let's get started. Um, th th you don't need to really worry about this until you have the foundation of your essay down, just like your traditional um, argument essay that has an introduction, a thesis with a claim, reason one, reason two, reason three, conclusion. You get that down first, then you worry about what I'm about to talk about. Otherwise, I wouldn't watch necessarily watch this video um, until you have the, the foundation established that, then um, get into these three add-ons. Um, so I wanna talk about each of those three add-ons. And um, if you do have your claim and you have a general idea of your reasons, then just keep watching and these will help you understand how we're gonna use this. Um, so the Toolman model, the Toolman model matters um, just because it is trying to connect on a deeper level with your reader beyond just your reasons. <clears throat> so your reader, your, your, your opponent is going to hear your reasons and um, let's, we're trying to assume they're going to disagree um, with you. And so how can you go on another level to connect with them? So they want to change their mind or work with you. And um, if you guys remember the Miss the Miss Rogers and the Power of Persuasion video that we watched in class, or I had you guys watch um, if it's this online class, um, one of the things they talked about in terms of logos is a concession, and a concession is um, is similar to your counter argument in this essay. And concession is admitting that um, your opponent has some good reasons. So you admit the val validity of a point, uh, you build trust with the opposing side. And so by building trust, um, they're more likely to want to hear what you have to say. Um, that's one of our goals. Um, when you build trust and you show the other side you're listening, then they're gonna, they're gonna um, they're gonna actually take you seriously. <clears throat> um, it also shows you understand th their um, point of view on a deeper level. If they don't think that you understand them, then they're not gonna listen. So the part of the reason of the counter argument in the Toolman model or any essay, the, any essay we've written in our, in our uh, class is to show that you understand where they're coming from. Um, you, they're, they're like, wait a second, he already knows what I'm saying. He already, he already, um, he's already thought about this. So maybe my points are not as strong. So 
you don't want to necessarily insult their intelligence, but you want to realize you want them to realize that you've thought about this deeply. And especially if you have, um, then they're going to, again, trust you a little bit more. Um, and then another part of the tool model that we're going to talk about is a compromise. Um, it offers a, 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 in the conclusion paragraph, a compromise. Um, so we're trying to sort of soften the audience up. We're trying to soften the people who disagree with us up a little bit so that they'll trust us and we'll change their mind. Um, and so let's go over these different parts. I'm gonna first go over the qualifier. I'm gonna be looking to my, over here, uh, at another computer that I'm, I am have my notes on. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, so let's say, let me, this is just a hypothetical example. Let's say um, you have a friend and they say, I will never go to New York City. I'm just gonna stay, you know, we're at Carteret Community College, we're in a small county in North Carolina, so we're in a small town. And they're saying, I will never go to New York City um, or any of those cities that require you to get on a subway. Um, let's say you talk to them a little bit and you say, um, hey, what if we go to New York City, but we rent a car and we won't get on a subway and we'll stay away from the big crowds, okay? And, and you, you know, maybe you, you learn that um, the person has um, um, a fear of like subways. They don't like subways and sort of being trapped underground, something like that. Maybe they've watched too many stupid movies from the 90s that were where subways have issues or something like that. Um, I just saw a movie about that <clears throat> um, a couple of days ago. But um, you're trying to, you're trying, you qualify your original claim. Your original claim might be like, hey, let's go to New York City. The person says, I will never go to New York City. And you say, hey, we'll go to New York City except we'll rent a car and we'll drive everywhere. And so they're like, well, maybe, maybe we can't go to New York City if I don't have to get on a subway. So the qualifier is go to New York City and get a car. The original is, let's go to New York City. So that was a kind of a compromise. Um, so that a qualifier takes the original claim and then it um, qualifies it, changes it a little bit so that it's more acceptable to the audience, makes it a little bit less absolute, okay? So um, another example of this might be, um, the minimum wage in North Carolina should be raised from $7.25 to $10. So I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna argue for that. I'm gonna raise it from, currently 2020 is $7.25. I'm gonna raise it to 10 bucks. Um, and then the other person says, that's unreasonable. Like, we can't raise the minimum wage that much. So then you qualify what you originally said and say, well, hey, what if we make it um, eight fifty per hour, okay? So original claim, raise it 10 bucks, qualifier, we should raise it to eight fifty per hour in North Carolina. Okay, so that's my little, um, I wrote it out real quick there. The, so your original claim, it, it takes a little bit of a hard stance, and then you qualify it and then make it more acceptable to your audience, okay? Now, the advantage to this is that um, 850 is not what you originally wanted, but at least it is some, uh, some an improvement, okay, if you're trying to raise minimum wage. Um, and um, a qualifier can do two things. So in this case right here, in the one about New York City I just mentioned, it um, makes it more acceptable to your opponent and it uses a little bit less absolute. Um, so you're gonna take out, um, you can just change the number in this case or take out the word never, always, the best, the worst. Um, and you're going to, um, change it to something less absolute. Um, so in some, in some ways, um, <clears throat> you are, you're meeting somebody halfway. Now let's look at it, let's look at a student example, okay? So the student example argues smartphones are making people antisocial. 
because the they take up they take up and uh, take up time and they are shallow view of relationships. Um, so uh, that would be the, the the claim is smartphones are making people antisocial. The qualifier will say although there are some good qualities to the smartphones. This is another uh, um, angle you can take the qualifier. You can also uh, mention in a qualifier um, the advantages of your particular thing and then state your original claim. Although there's some qualities, here's the here's the qualified version of that. Although there are some qualities to smartphones like being able to use for business, um, they they could make you antisocial. Okay, so this this says it 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 um, lists out a reason or two why um, they're they're good. Then it also says it could make you um, antisocial, as opposed to saying um, they make people antisocial. It says it could make you. So it makes a it's, that's a qualified statement. Okay, so this makes it a little bit more acceptable to people. Um, and people are like, they, they listen a little bit more in that situation. Okay, so that is a qualifier. Again, the qualifier is in the conclusion. So the qualifier um, is the, it's kind of like a thesis statement for your conclusion. So it's the first sentence in your conclusion. Um, so if I were going to use the minimum wage thing, um, the first sentence um, would say, "We sh um, North Carolina should raise their minimum wage from seven twenty-five to eight fifty, uh, which is a more reasonable number to raise the minimum wage to." Okay, so that qualifies it. That's 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 the qualifier. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about um, the warrant. Um, Again, we are trying to connect with the reader, and the warrant does the same thing. The warrant tries to gain common ground with your opponent. Um, and it, it sometimes, um, it could be like a commonly held problem. It could be a commonly held belief. Um, there's a variety of things you could use to connect with your, to assume your audience was, was going to be on the same page with. And I think a lot of times, Commonly held problem is is um, something that is helpful. Um, so you remember with um, logos, we talked about a historical analogy. So um, historical analogies um, can be helpful with a warrant, but a warrant, like I said, many different ways. And I'm going to give an example here. Uh, before Martin Luther King, there was Frederick Douglass, and Frederick Douglass was speaking to a group of people in a speech called what is the fourth of july to the slave i believe that's the, the the correct phrasing that that speech he gave and he's trying to he's speaking on the fourth of july and he's trying to connect with this audience and try to in 1850 10 years before the civil war and he's trying to connect with them and say hey um I, i'm like you i have a lot of the same beliefs as you and his goal his main goal is to help them to, he wants them to, to get on the sort of abolitionist movement in order to um, push back against slavery and to make um, in slavery in America. So in 1850, slavery was still alive and well uh, all over the country. Um, so he wanted to push that further and, and persuade his audience. So he could have went in and said, hey, um, this is, Slavery needs to end. This is why, but that's not what he did. He didn't want to. He 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 assumed all a lot of those people already felt that way that that slavery should end. So what he did was, he the first two pages of this speech when you read it on paper now, um, are a lot of ways of him building common ground with his reader, and the way he builds common ground is he talks about how much he admires the American revolutionaries. Um, a revolution in the revolutionary period in 1775, 1776, how much he admired those people for risking their lives to, for freedom to break off from Britain. He talks about that for a while. He says this, your forefathers did this. Your forefathers were courageous and they believed fully in um, breaking off from Britain. They risked their lives. They didn't know what the future 
and he he describes this really clearly. So the people are sitting there and they're thinking, well, maybe, you know, I am. My forefathers did. Yeah, they did. They were brave and they did stand up for what they believed in. So he builds common ground. And so Frederick Douglass is like, I love, and this is 70 years after the American Revolution when he gives the speech. So he's kind of looking at their grandfathers and great grandfathers. So those people are sitting there and they're like, I have something in common with this guy. Okay, so a warrant is what you want to do, and you want to build common ground with your warrant. So how do you do that? You want to find some value that that your audience and you can can connect on. And so you can <clears throat> um, appeal to a shared value of an audience. And um, just like when we studied pathos, we looked at a um, value proof. That's the same thing. And so you're going to be pretty much used, born is similar to a value proof with pathos. Um, so one example, that we're using the same essay. This was a, an essay by Bryson Farley. And he argued smartphones are making people antisocial. So how can you connect with your, how did he connect? So he wants to build common ground. And he says, every parent wants their teenager to grow up to have a rich social life and good friends. So he's appealing to people um, who are parents in this situation. And everybody wants their kid to have a good social life. And if you say, do you want your kid to have a, a healthy social life, have have close friends? I'm, I'm not a parent, but I'm sure anybody who's a parent can, uh, can really understand that. And you want to say, yeah, absolutely. I want my kid to have, um, you know, good friends growing up, right? <clears throat> um, so he builds that. His warrant, his warrant paragraph is about just that one thing. So your warrant paragraph is one thing to connect a shared value with your audience. And um, if, if you're writing about the business world, you might write about a value everybody in the business world have. If you're talking about education, you think about it, uh, some, something within education, something that everybody kind of agrees with. And in that paragraph, so here's your, um, you've got your intro, reason one, reason two. Again, very similar to the other essay. And then you've got your warrant paragraph there for paragraph four. So once you write that paragraph, um, you're going to write about a value that all, all of your um, audience could agree with, especially people who disagree with you. <clears throat> um, so again, in that situation, it could be a shared value. Just like Frederick Douglass had his shared value of admiration for um, the men and women who went through the revolution, the American Revolution, okay? Another way you can look at a, um, a warrant, um, the warrant paragraph, is you can, you can try to state a, um, a unspoken assumption. And let me give a different essay example. Um, this student named Carrie wanted to argue that teachers need a raise in North Carolina, okay? Specifically high school teachers. So. Teachers, um, she says, teachers are not paid what they deserve. They need a raise, okay? So she says in her warrant that it goes without saying the quality, the quality teachers are a fundamental foundation for future generations, okay? So it's almost, in this situation, she's almost taking it off topic. She's almost going off topic a little bit. She's just saying, hey, can we all agree here that teachers are very valuable? Okay, so her warrant is looking at something that we could all agree with, and also assuming that if, if, if we can all say that foundational for our state of North Carolina, if teachers are valued, our, our, um, the quality of our society in North Carolina is going to get better. So her whole paragraph is about that. Okay. And so those are the kind of things you could bring up in your essay um, in the warrant paragraph. Okay. So. One other thing I want to add, I have posted these examples on Moodle. So if you want to read through some of this stuff, you can look at that as well. So again, the warrant, I think the warrant is very undervalued and I probably should include more essays, but it is trying to find, a, again, we're trying to connect 
with the, the reader and um, pick out things that, that we both agree with. And it's kind of saying, it is saying, do you agree with this? Well, if you agree with this, then you should consider um, my claim as, as valid and maybe even you should come over to my side of the, of the debate. Um, and then finally, the counter argument. Okay, so you guys are experienced with this. Um, the counter argument um, is, um, it is sort of like a um, concession. So it is pointing out, so you've got, uh, let's, let's look at this real quick. Counter argument number five. Um, so reason one, reason two, warrant, counter argument. And it, in the other video, they called it a rebuttal. I don't want to confuse you, but paragraph five of your essay needs to be the other side's a reason or two reasons from the other side. Okay, so if you're going to argue uh, we should raise minimum wage, then you would say, well, let's look at the reasons why we shouldn't raise minimum wage. Okay, um, so that re that way, the other side who 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 do not want to raise minimum wage. They're like, oh, this person understands where we're coming from, okay? Um, first of all, you don't want to characterize or caricature people on who disagree with you. If you do that, you're, you can maybe make the people who already agree with you laugh and you're mocking the other side, but you're probably not going to really persuade people who disagree with you outright. You're not going to earn their respect by um, painting them in an uh, inaccurate light. Okay, obviously you disagree with them. Obviously you don't really, you're not on board with them. But you want to think about how can I, some in some way kind of show them I understand them fully. So the counter argument is that. You're trying to show them you understand. So if we're thinking about minimum wage, a lot of people feel like, I, I, I would say that that's not really fair to some people who own um, a small business. They're like, well, I, this is my business. I don't feel like it's right for someone to dictate my um, the, the amount of money I give my employees, okay? So um, if you, you might say that in your counter, you might say, hey, um, if you're gonna, this is a reasonable thing. That sort of infringes upon some of the businesses' um, freedom to give their employees a, a, a wage they feel um, fits the job. So if you're raising it to $10, that might be a little bit, um, that's extreme to someone who probably own a small business. Um, so counter arguments are there to help us to help um, to understand the opposing side and also show we understand what they're saying. We're not, uh, we understand what they're saying. And it also, if you remember the straw man fallacy, when I debate, People always try to avoid the straw man fallacy, which is misrepresenting the opposing side. So you, we do we want to avoid straw man fallacy, and we can easily do that. Um, it's easy to do, do that to misrepresent um, what the other side actually believes. Okay, but if we put forward what we've studied on the other side and show we understand, then we're not going to make that. We're not going to commit the fallacy. Okay. Um, Okay, so that's the counter argument. Um, and then, if possible, in paragraph six for your reason three, try to give a, so if you did say something about small businesses, maybe for this one, you could say it, it doesn't allow small businesses as much freedom, but here's one good thing, it, the raising minimum wage would help small businesses. Okay, you could say like that, or you could, directly counter that and say, well, it doesn't, it could infringe, but also here's an, here's another thing to think about related to that. So you, it's a, it's an opportunity for you to maybe debunk that belief. And then that's fine. If you do debunk what you put in the counter argument, you say, um, this is what the other side believes, but the other side doesn't take into consideration this other part. So, for the counter argument, um, just keep in mind um, that reason three can directly relate to that. So it can stand on its own, counter argument can stand on its own, or it can 
reason three, you can address it and sort of debunk it or argue against it, okay? Um, so that's the overview of the those three elements. Those are the three elements of the tooling model that, that make it unique. And so, um, and, and make you, it different from that first essay, okay? Um, if you have any questions about this, please email me about those three elements um, that I've mentioned here. Um, I'll be happy to uh, talk to you more about this. But in conclusion, I really want to, I want you to think about how this could also relate to your personal life. I know that for me, when I'm debating with people, I always try to understand their perspective. If I'm debating with a friend or a family member, um, those are the kind of conversations that in debates we're going to get into much more than like some kind of formal debate. Um, but these things are very practical in everyday life too. And I don't, I'm not going to go into all that, but if you think about understanding other people's perspective first, kind of argument, um, if you think about um, qualifiers, trying to compromise between you and somebody else trying to come to a conclusion, and then also a warrant thinking about shared values and common ground, you can say, hey, here's what we agree on. Um, let's keep that in mind as we are disagreeing. Those are just things you might even hear from um, if, if you're going to be like a, a counselor. I've heard um, people in terms of um, conflict resolution within families and counseling talk about things that are similar to this, just using different language. So these are not only things that we use in academic settings about some kind of political debate, but also ways we communicate um, with our families and our friends. And um, if you're like me, um, those are much, those hold more weight than a lot of political debates, you know what I mean. Um, hope this is helpful. Um, email me if you got any questions, and I look forward to seeing what you want to write about.